Hello and welcome to the ANSYS workshop 5.3 for CFD ANSYS meshing of a manifold model. Um, again, you must be more familiar now what needs to be done for these uh, workshops. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, drag and drop a ANSYS meshing individual component. So the objective of this uh, workshop is to create virtual entities, uh, set local refinements and surfaces of interest, defining program control inflation, and again checking the mesh quality influence of defeaturing and pinch settings. So the part file that we're going to be looking for here is the exhaust scdoc file. So replace the geometry, import browse, go to your working directory. And then here what we're looking for, um, as I said, is the exhaust um, file there. Open. Um, double click on the mesh, give it a second and it should load up. So now once this is imported in, open up your geometry and select your components. And what we want to do is in the graphic options is just transparency is 0 0.5 so we can see through it um, a tiny little bit more. Also at the same time what we want to see is we want to be able to see some of the node uh, points um, that are there. So by clicking on the display you should be able to find the function uh, very clearly where it says show vertices. So we have these vertices uh, and they'll be used later on uh, throughout this. So. We also want to have a look at the um, color as well. Um, so color by connection, um, and that will also um, provide us a few uh, guidance in terms of you know what's connected and what's not being connected. Um, at the same time, um, we chose this by connection. We also want to right click on the model um, in the project tree and insert virtual topology. So again, where the model is here, you put the model on top here, insert virtual topology. So the virtual topology option is now available. So with the virtual topology, um, you've got it here. What we want to do, do is split some of the faces. So like, for example, this face here. Um, so by splitting that, we can see um, you've got the split edge, split by vertice, and that's the one that we want. So by selecting this surface here, you can see that it gives us uh, the split face adversities option. So what we want to do is that selected as face is giving us only this hard vertex. So if we change this one to vertex and select the first two, so it's this one here and this one here, we can see that the split face adversity becomes available. So click on that and that's now being split and the same needs to be done uh, on the other end um, again making sure that it's the appropriate vertices so that one there and that one there split so that's now been split and we can use that for a multi meshing uh, later on so the first step is to define the multi zone um, sections so we've got two cylinders we've got this one here and we've got this section here so make sure we've got the body tool selected um, select the two bodies, this one here and this one here, and then right click on the mesh, insert method, and here we want the two bodies, change that to automatic to uh, multi zone. And what we also want is a uniform surface mesh method. So this one here, turn that to uniform, and the uh, source and target need that as automatic, so it, it can do this um, automatically for us. So the two other bodies will be meshed using the default patch confirmation tetrahedrons, so therefore no method definition is needed here. However, if the mesh detail view switch the triangle surface mesh uh, option to advance, uh, this algorithm will generally provide a smoother uh, surface mesh. So here in the advance um, section that is asking for um, in the mesh here, um, where it's got the triangle surface mesh, if we change that one to advanced front, um, it will provide us a bit more um, clarity in the mesh surface. So obviously here it's still mechanical. We want to change that to CFD. Um, once that changes to CFD, it gets ready for fluent. And we want to expand the sizing section here. And the key thing, the element size um, is eight millimeters. And here. Obviously, we're not using uh, adaptive, so that's on no. The maximum size is 16 um, uh, units, home units, millimeters. Make sure that's correct. 
um, so eight millimeters here and 16 millimeters there um, we just open this up a little bit more and if we go down so uh, the growth rate should be 1.2 for um, this one here so 1.2 is by default that's perfectly fine and what we want is the curvature turned on as well. So capture curvature, yes. Uh, the curvature minimum size is going to be two millimeters. Um, and the curvature normal angle is going to be 12. Um, put that to no. I think that's program controlled. And um, so we also want to make sure that the valve uh, of the D feature and pinch tolerance are set um, as shown um, on the work package as well. Um, so the defeaturing size here, um, as you can see, is default there. Change that one to 0 0.5. And everything else should be appropriate. So, no, 1.2, 16, yes, 0 0.5, yes, 2, 12, and no for that as well. So we can move on now next to the uh, the next part, which is looking at a section within this part here. There is a surface that we want to get a hold of, um, and it's this surface here. So to attain this surface, we can just hide this surface here um, to get a hold of that one. So if I just press F8 on there, it will hide that so I can actually zoom in and grab this surface that I need. Um, which is highlighted. Uh, what we want to do is we want to insert a face sizing onto this one. So mesh insert sizing and it's a face sizing and the element size is going to be one millimeters. And we want the behavior to be hard as well. So change that one, double click on it and it becomes hard. So what we also want to do now is we've got these two edges um, along the cylinder that we've created. Um, so select these two. Um, and what we want to do is we want to insert in a uh, edge size and a number of size of um, six millimeters and a bias of uh, factor as well. So insert sizing, it's going to be two, uh, six millimeters and then we're going to make sure that this is soft and that the bias is double ended. Um, so double ended means this one here and we put a value of two. Um, so you can see that it gets small and then large in the middle and then small. We also want to put a uh, body sizing as well. So body, select, right click, insert sizing. Um, and this one here is going to be four millimeters um, of the overall. Uh, and then that one's been set as well. So the inflation controls as well, um, it's going to be program controlled. Um, so in order to do that one, we want to make sure that we get the name selection correct first. Um, as I said, once you put a name on a given surface, and you use the program control, anything that doesn't have a name selection will have an inflation turned on to it. So make sure the face is turned on, and on the keyboard, outlet, um, and then here, select these surfaces, one, two, three, four, and on the keyboard, inlets. Um, and at this time here, we can go back to display, turn off the uh, uh, show and direction, not a problem. And here now we can go right click show all faces as well. Um, show all hidden faces. And because we've got that, we can now go to the mesh. We can now go to the inflation uh, program controlled and make sure that it's um, smooth transition. Number of layers we need is only three uh, 1.2 pre um, and now. And then we are now ready to generate the mesh. So again, just go by home and generate. So as you can see now, once the meshing is done, um, you'll be able to see uh, the different approach to the mesh that we've used here. Um, and again, you know, it's always a good idea to go on to the actual quality um, of the mesh, um, have a look at the orthogonal uh, quality. Um, as we know, it's important that it should not go below 0 0.05. The minimum for this mesh is approximately 0 0.2, um, so which is really um, good. Um, and as you can see, the values may differ to the values uh, presented in the um, workshop uh, documentation. So.
Um, okay, well done for this, and let's move on to the next uh, workshop.